Hi, I'm Amber Hamlin. I'm the Trauma Program Manager for Ephraim McDowell Regional Medical Center and Ephraim McDowell James B. Hagen Hospital. With me today is... I'm Michael Magley, a paramedic with Lincoln County EMS Training Division. And today we're going to present a video to you about Stop the Bleed outside the hospital setting. So at this time we have approached a victim that we have found as you a lay person would and we're going to assess the scene, make sure the scene is safe. If the scene is not safe, then you need to try to remove yourself and the victim from the scene. So at this point in time, you're approaching the scene and you find a patient that is in need of emergency care. At this point in time, you're going to determine that the scene is safe. There's no water, there's no electricity, there's no needles, there's no, if anything that can further harm the patient and or harm yourself. And if that is, you need to remove yourself and the patient from the scene. If there's no um, safety hazards to be found, at this point in time, you're going to find the life-threatening bleeding. A life-threatening bleed is classified as any pulling on the, on the ground, any blood that cannot be stopped with direct pressure. Um, if their pants and or shirt, wherever the bleed is, is saturated in blood, or any bright red blood that is found to be squirting. Um, so at this point in time, you're going to take the clean gauze that you have with you or the clean gauze that you have around you, or if there's a trauma kit available, you'll take the gauze from that. You're going to open the wound, make sure you take the shirt off or the pants anywhere you see any amount of blood. Um, you're going to, like I said, find the life-threatening blood which is blood that is pooling, blood that is squirting, uh, any blood that cannot be stopped with the direct pressure that we are seeing applying here. So what you do is you take the pads, both hands, over the wound, you're going to apply deep and um, steady pressure to the wound in order to assist to stop the bleed. Alright, at this point in time we're going to move on to the next step, which would be if you are unable to stop the bleeding with direct pressure as the initial line of treatment, next you're going to go into packing the wound if the wound is located on the neck, the shoulder, or the groin. At this point in time, you're going to take your clean gauze, as you can see Amber here doing, one finger, one to the other, over the top, gauze, gauze, gauze on top of each other into the wound. After you see Amber put enough gauze into the wound there, after she's going to do that, she's going to place the remaining gauze on top of the wound and once again hold direct pressure. As you can see as the video we've shown here, these are two simple ways that a layperson outside of the hospital such as yourself would be able to stop the bleed and save a life in time for emergency responders to show up and take care of.